Thank you, sir. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hazima Mozum, and I welcome you all to the first lecture under ComStack webinar series on water resource management. We are very proud to, we are very grateful and delighted to have Professor Dr. Muhammad Ashraf with us. Professor Dr. Muhammad Ashraf is the chairman of Pakistan Council for Research in Water Resources, PCRWR in Pakistan. The title of his talk today is Role of PCRWR in Addressing Water Security Challenges of Pakistan. Um, also on behalf of Comstech, I'm also grateful to our participants who are joining from various corners of the world and we have more than 200 people registered for this event. Uh, with this, I request His Excellency, Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Chaudhry, Coordinator General of Comstech, to welcome and int uh, introduce our guest speaker for today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This very important uh, seminar, which is primarily focused on the most important issue, which is water. See, water is, uh, is life. When you want to go to any planetary structures, uh, you want to go to any uh, star or any planet, this is the first thing which you always search. But on planet Earth, water is in absolute danger because of many reasons. Uh, the water resources available to humanity are available in very uh, disoriented uh, manner in a way that there are countries which have plenty of water, but majority of the countries do not really have enough water. And as the population is growing, the per capita water availability is decreasing. As a result, many countries are becoming water scarce. And Pakistan is unfortunately one of them. The same goes with OIC countries. Majority of the OIC countries are in the arid, arid areas. And because of that, uh, it is a cross effect on agriculture, healthcare, health and hygiene on every facet of life, which is related to water production. And water is not only an issue of uh, water management alone, which of course we'll we'll, we will see when this uh, very distinguished speakers will talk about is also much more than that. Water is a psychological issue because you may have plenty of water, but you still conserve water because you think that other people would use it. Or uh, you know that there are people who think differently and they would like to use as much as water as possible. As a result of it, fresh water is not available for uh, the other people. Water availability is one of the most important indicators of the development. And this is a result that uh, Comstack has uh, created two important institutional mechanisms. One is, uh, this is a global forum, Comstack Forum on Environment and Ecosystem Restoration. And of course, we all know that water bodies are destroyed in many countries of the world and water is one of the most important geopolitical issues. And there is a need of, uh, of uh, reclaiming those water resources in a manner that they become easily accessible for uh, humanity. We see in Africa, Chad and other countries, water is one uh, important issue which has threatened the food security and health of lots of people. The speaker of today, a uh, very close, close friend of ours, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ashraf, is a water expert. He is a waterman uh, because he is the one who has been working in this field and for him, water is life. Water, life, uh, water is life in all definition because this is his profession and his patient. And he uh, lead Pakistan's premier institution, Pakistan Council of Research on Water in Water Resources. Uh, PCRWR is a member of Inter-Islamic Network on Water Research Development, which is in Wadham, a uh, Comstock Network in Jordan. And this is also a very premier organization, part of Comstock and Social Effects. Professor Ashraf uh, is basically an agriculture engineer. He graduated from the University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, which is a premier institution, and has earned his degree from the University of Newcastle, UK. He has more than 30 years of research and development experience in water resource development and management. 
in arid and semi-arid areas, and most of the YC countries fall into these two geographical regions, and has over 100 national and international research publications to his credit. He's also the editor of Journal uh, PEDI and Water Environment, published by Springer. Presently, he's working as the chairman of PCRWR, which is a premier organization focusing on water. Is also the convener of Pakistan National Committee of International Hydrological Program of UNESCO and the coordinator of Upper Indus Basin Network. Uh, Dr. Ashraf has played an extremely important role in water policy formulation for Pakistan. And this is one of the areas in which we are looking forward to have the guidance of Dr. Ashraf. So we uh, will be able to facilitate water for policy formulation in other YC countries. With this, I would invite uh, Professor Dr. Ash Muhammad Ashraf for his presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary Saab. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good morning, good afternoon, and good, good evening uh, from where uh, the part of the world you are located. Uh, it is my, in fact, pleasure uh, to be part of this uh, you know, webinar series. Uh, it is basically the initiative of the Professor Dr. Paul Chaudhary and his team to connect the, the, the you know the world, particularly the OIC countries members, and share knowledge uh, among the country uh, 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 countries professional uh, among the countries and the among the professionals of the particularly of the OIC countries because we have many commonalities uh, uh, you know among uh, among our uh, you know. Uh, countries, uh, some countries are water abundance and some are you know, irrigated, some are uh, dry land, uh, some are basically cross cutting issues. For example, water quality is a cross cutting issue, climate change is a climate, uh, you know, uh, climate change is also a cross cutting issues. So we thought that uh, when we give our, you know, uh, our, our present our work, what we have been doing and how we have been managing. Uh, water resources, how we, we, are, we are able to address the, the some of the water security challenges in, in the country that might be helpful for the other OIC country uh, to take some message. Uh, we'll also see how we can, uh, you know, uh, help each other you know, because, uh, uh, you know, as Dr. Uh, Professor Balchow has mentioned, water is life and there is no concept of life on earth without water. So uh, I will, uh, I will uh, just uh, give you a, a presentation online. I will just focus on the national security of Pakistan, existing water sources, challenges. And we have fortunately national water policy that was approved uh, during uh, 2018. Uh, what it basically says about the, uh, the water scores in the country. Then the work we have been doing uh, PCRW, particularly in the country, uh, water resources uh, related to water sources management, uh, particularly in the irrigated areas and dry land areas. Then water quality, as mentioned, it is a cross cutting. It is every issue is it's related to the uh, quality of uh, the drinking water, quality of the food production, environment, ecosystem. It basically uh, relate to the whole ecosystem. Uh, it has many much more implications uh, than the quantity. Then uh, the application of IoT, Internet of Things, we are using in uh, the water sources management and governance. So then we will share some of the knowledge product that might be useful for our professionals. And then uh, uh, we have put a slide uh, uh, finally to see how we can, PCRW can uh, help OIC countries, some of the OIC countries uh, who are facing uh, water uh, resource development management and governance issues. So how we can uh, offer them uh, our services. Uh, so uh, that rightly it has been mentioned that uh, basically uh, water is life. So when we look at the in fact the national security of the country, not of uh, Pakistan, but any country, its national security is basically linked with its uh, food security. And food security is directly linked with the water security. There is no concept of food security 
uh, without uh, basically uh, having the security of water, water resources uh, development and, and management. And any decline, both in terms of its quantity or quality, will have a long lasting impact uh, on, on, the, on the water security, again, the direct food security and, and national security. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, over the time, uh, water security has water security has uh, you know emerged as a one of the top most uh, non traditional security challenge in the world, uh, along with the climate change and and the food security. And uh, water security, in fact, is, is basically at the heart of the, all the non traditional security challenges we are we are facing. Uh, in, the, in the region, in, in, in the different subcontinent, and in, in, in the different continents. Uh, so when we talk about the uh, you know Pakistan water sources, you might know that Pakistan has one of the largest contiguous irrigation system in the world. We have three major reservoirs with uh, you know forty five main canals irrigating about seventeen million hectares of uh, command area. And at the same time, it has one of the largest groundwater aquifer in the world. We are fourth largest, uh, you know, groundwater holding uh, country after India, China, and uh, and the USA. And this this is very very precious water, and this is basically uh, uh, it. It is basically the buffer. It provides a buffer against drought, climate change, flood, and all kind of stuff. It provides more than 60% water for our agriculture purposes, more than 90% domestic water it comes from, drinking water and domestic water it comes from the groundwater, and almost 100% domestic water it comes from the uh, from groundwater. So it is very important for, uh, for us uh, to manage the, uh, the groundwater. In fact, in Pakistan, uh, surface water uh, can uh, and groundwater cannot be Disintegrated. Basically, these are those, these are the uh, two sides of 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 the same uh, coin because uh, this groundwater has been established because of the uh, recharge from the surface, uh, uh, you know, irrigation network, which is huge, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, then again, uh, we have more than uh, forty percent of our area, uh, which is basically uh, rain-fed, dry land. When we say dry land, it means the area where total livelihood depends on on uh, rainwater. So in those areas, uh, they, uh, you know, capturing of rainwater, harvesting of rainwater, it's, it's a productive use become important and entirely important uh, uh, for us particularly uh, because the, the uh, future uh, food demand will be basically we we, we believe that as in uh, you know in some of the uh, the irrigated area. Uh, the crops are already using the maximum water, and they are providing the, the maximum, uh, you know, return. Uh, the future food security will be dependent on the managing the resources in the in the dry land area. And I believe that many of our uh, you know, sister countries in the OIC countries they are basically struggling to manage the rainwater. So here we will be able to share some of the, the success story we you know, we have you now what we have done in the areas. Uh, so when we look at the, the major water sector, uh, you know, issues in, in the country, though we have one of the largest irrigation system in the world, at the same time, it is uh, subject to a number of issues. The greater the system, the greater and complex issues uh, we are facing. One of the uh, most important, uh, you know, uh, issue is the growing water scarcity. As the population is increasing, the water sources are more or less constant and stagnant uh, because there is uh, no chances of uh, additional uh, water coming into the system, whether in surface and groundwater. Uh, so uh, water scarcity is growing over time. If you look at this uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, graph, you will see that uh, in, in, in 1950, we have water per capita water more than 5,000 cubic meters per person. Which gradually, with the increase in the population, gradually, uh, you know, decreasing. And during 1991, we touched the water stress line, and during 2004-5, we touched the uh, water water scarcity line. 
And if the situation remains the same, that is, population could be at, uh, keeps on increasing at the same pace, and water sources remain constant. Uh, by 2025, we will be uh, touching the absolute water scarcity line, means uh, per capita availability uh, less than 500 cubic meter per person. Uh, so this is basically mainly because of the uh, inadequate storage, uh, uh, storage and rectoring floods. Uh, during the uh, floods of 2010, 2011, 14, we lost more than uh, 90 million acre foot water. We, when we convert it into billion cubic meter, it is about 110 billion cubic meter of water. Um, basically, that uh, that was lost from this system. It was not lost on this uh, uh, from the system. It had devastating impact on the infrastructure livestock, agriculture, and human, human life. And, and it basically because of the inadequate uh, storage. Um, storage basically help us uh, to regulate water from the high flow period uh, to the low flow, uh, flow periods. So we can uh, harvest water uh, during the flood period and then use it in, 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 the, in the drought period or, and when the water is not available or the less water is available. So uh, there is another issue uh, with the storage reservoir. What are we, what are we are storing at this moment is about uh, 20 billion cubic meter of water. It's being lost at a rate of 0 0.2 million acre feet uh, per year. So again, there is a huge potential of uh, hill torrents uh, from different part of the country. Uh, we have estimated that is about uh, 18 million acre feet of water, about 20, uh, 23 million cubic meter uh, of water, which is available from the hill torrents. Uh, it is again not only losses of water, but it's again uh, sometimes it, uh, it not only sometimes, many times when it's not properly managed, it results into disaster. So the management of the floods is uh, and uh, carry over this flood water to the other, other uh, you know, uh, uh, part of the years, uh, uh, management of water, conservation of water during uh, the high flow period or wet, uh, wet period, wet season is very important to take it to the dry period uh, and, and to cope with the, with the uh, you know, drought like situation. Uh, the another issues which are we face, which we are facing, uh, have been facing with this system efficiency. The system uh, overall, uh, you know, if you look at the system, uh, the overall system, uh, the efficiency is uh, uh, less than 40 percent. It means 60 percent of the water is lost from the source to the sink. So, there is, uh, uh, you know, there are different opinion of the scientists, professional on this. Uh, they say that this is at system level, but look at, when we look at it uh, at the small level. At the form level, uh, at the some uh, some uh, command level, so uh, uh, it, this it looks like a losses. But when we look at the larger side at the system level, so uh, this is not a loss because water loss from the from the irrigation canals uh, and the the water application on the on the form uh, it can be reused and by re by reused and pump uh, uh, water. Uh, at your discretion uh, to supplement the, uh, the the agriculture and domestic and industrial purposes. So on a, on a system scale, uh, so this is not a loss, but uh, this is energy loss because uh, once you uh, 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 this water is uh, you know water is lost from the surface irrigation system or uh, during the application at the field, uh, it will definitely uh, go to the groundwater and to pump groundwater. Uh, you need energy, and energy is becoming an issue, uh, not only in Pakistan, in, in the, around the world, the, uh, the, over the time, the energy is becoming an issue. Because of the huge pressure uh, on the groundwater, I mentioned that more than 60% for agriculture, more than 90% for domestic, and more, almost 100% dusty water comes from the groundwater. So it has uh, uh, placed a tremendous you know, pressure on the, on the groundwater resulting into groundwater depletion 
uh, you know, both in terms of its quantity and, and quality. The quality. Uh, and, and again, the disposal of a drainage effluent is an issue, uh, you know, uh, on the, you know, drainage effluent. On one hand, it's an issue, issue. It's a nuisance. Uh, but on this, on the other hand, it provides a, you know, a potential, the, you know, opportunity to use it as a saline uh, water and saline agriculture if it, it is managed properly. Wastewater use and disposal is an issue. About uh, about uh, five billion cubic meter water is available in this system, uh, which basically uh, comes from mostly from the domestic and industrial sector, and ultimately it's going to the uh, to down to the stream and the reuse recycling of this uh, water is very important to cope with the uh, cope with the uh, water scarcity in the in the future. In fact, this water is already going into the system, and uh, and uh, this is not, uh, in fact, a wastage of water, but ultimately it was wastage of energy and it is polluting the downstream, you know, the ecosystem as well. So, poorness is another issue. Uh, for example, low water pricing in, in water. Uh, in fact, uh, water at domestic level or industrial level are for the agriculture. It is almost free. There are normally nominal charges being prepared by these by the, the consumer or the user or the stakeholder. The another issue is the lack of the groundwater regulatory framework. Because of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, lack, anybody can install any number of tubes at any time and can pump any amount of water. This is basically the main reason of groundwater depletion and, and degradation uh, in our part of the country. Another issue is the lack of the crop zone. For example, rice and sugar cane, uh, under you know some incentive of the uh, the government and with some uh, political interference, uh, the crops like uh, uh, rice and sugar cane they are now uh, being grown in those areas which are not basically meant for for growing these uh, these crops, uh, resulting into a number of issues. For example, uh, now uh, rice and sugar cane are grown are grown in the southern Punjab, where water is already, uh, surface water is already, uh, you know, in, uh, in scarce, uh, groundwater is slight. So what the people are doing, they are pumping groundwater to supplement their requirement of the sugar cane and the rice. So initially, uh, they, are, they are in fact pumping uh, the, the, the saline water, resulting into the secondary salinization. And this uh, salinization is basically a slow poison. It is a slow process. It takes time to dwell. Once it dwell, dwell on the land, then it, it basically takes decades to reclaim. So it is very serious uh, issue, uh, you know, uh, growing, uh, you know, crops like uh, sugar cane and rice in those areas which are not this element for it. So when we look at the, the option, what which we are doing, we have been doing basically a lot of research on uh, water resources, management and governance, uh, particularly in the irrigated area and dry land areas. Uh, one of the most important, uh, the work we have been doing uh, is the determination of the crop water requirement of the major crops. Uh, it, it is generally said if you don't uh, uh, measure a thing, you cannot manage it. Basically, we have the drainage type lysimeters uh, throughout the country. In fact, we are the only organization that owns drainage type lysimeter. Through drainage type lysimeter, we determine crop water requirements of major crops and then crop coefficients that basically help to devise the irrigation scheduling. And all professional do irrigation scheduling mean when to apply water and how much to apply water. Uh, because of lack of this knowledge, the, uh, the farmers keep on applying water, even their crop does not need water. So this is a basically a, a huge loss of water, particularly at the farm level. Uh, the, the water, when the water reaches to your farm, it is the, one of the most precious water at the farm because it travels thousands of kilometers to reach to your farm. And at this stage, if you lose it because of this lack of knowledge, so it is a very bad thing for the farmer and for the, for the whole nation as well. So um, as I mentioned, 
there is a huge pressure on on ground water basically ground water in the indus basin is very very peculiar the ground water in the in the indus basin is basically saline because of its marine geological formation over the uh, saline ground water a fresh water layer exists of the varying thickness uh, near to the uh, to the rivers and canals uh, the ground water is fresh and as we move from away from the canals and away from the uh, from the uh, river are the recharging sources it become uh, saline and, and and saline so the knowledge of this thickness fresh water thickness is very important uh, to extract the fresh water uh, uh, we we introduce the technology called the skimming wells that basically skim like the skim milk skim the fresh water without disturbing the without the saline water upcoming uh, from uh, from the from the bottom and side of the uh, side of the aquifer so so we have been able to uh, uh, you know uh, map the entire indus plain it is about 24 million hectare of area where we have been uh, able to map it you can see on the the left uh, top uh, uh, you know uh, the, the the map which shows uh, three uh, uh, rather four colors uh, the basically green color shows that uh, the water is uh, fresh and can be used directly. Pink shows that the water is of marginal quality. And red area basically shows uh, that uh, the groundwater is saline and it cannot be used directly without any uh, you know, uh, treatment or, or appropriate measure. And if you look at the, this uh, map again, you will see that from the top uh, where we have five rivers, uh, the groundwater is uh, basically at this. This is basically, you know, map showing 50 meter depth, and we have uh, uh, you know gone up to uh, 300 meter uh, depth. We have gone. So you will see that uh, as we move down, uh, down, uh, downstream, and uh, our uh, you know five rivers they merge into a single river. So after it, it becomes a single river, you can see. Uh, the groundwater is becoming saline and saline. There's only fresh water pocket along the Indus River. And as we move towards the Arabian Sea, it becomes uh, an, a highly saline and almost the entire area is, is uh, saline uh, in those areas. So, so this, this is one of the, the, the work we have done and it involves huge uh, you know, uh, resources. For example, this we done through the resistivity survey. We use the geophysical methods like resistivity survey, seismic, uh, and dose polarization. Uh, we use the uh, you know isotope analysis uh, to determine the the age of the water and sources of the water. Uh, the 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 greater this uh, the you know the age of the water, it means it is a fossil water and it cannot be. It is not a recharged water. So, so we use the isotope and then we use the groundwater modeling uh, to, to completely you know, determine the water balance. Then we also introduce the uh, you know, real-time groundwater bay, uh, you know, uh, uh, remote sensing and GIS based surface and groundwater hydrology. Uh, using the, you know, uh, taking help from the University of Washington, uh, we are basically, in fact, now using a GRACE model uh, to real-time to to, uh, to know the uh, the fate of the groundwater looking from this space uh, the, in this way you know particular field we are developing our uh, our you know expertise with the help of the university of washington and other colleagues because uh, you know uh, uh, investigation and mapping on a large scale is quite uh, time consuming laborious and cost intensive so now we are using the, the you know space technology uh, to 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 measure it. We are also using, excuse me, uh, in, we have introduced basically the Indus uh, telemetry is in our uh, you know major rivers and, and canal uh, to 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 collect the data and transport data on real time. Uh, we in the, uh, at this moment we are helping our in the Civil System Authority uh, on installation and uh, you know uh, measurement of this. This is basically this has helped to remove the human error and now uh, the the real time data through the 
velocity sensor and through the depth sensor is being transported to the to the stakeholder in fact to the policy maker and decision maker who has to take a decision about the distribution of the water again we have also been able to introduce a number of research and to do a number of on farm water conservation technology and one of these then uh, is very important which i would like to share uh, with my colleagues uh, uh, around the world uh, it is basically a uh, rice on uh, on on beds there was basically a myth in in our part of the country that rice needs standing water so uh, because of this myth a huge amount of water was being used uh, on uh, uh, to produce the rice for example i give you example we have determined the rice water requirement of central punjab which is 480 mm in other words we can say around 500 mm whereas farmers because of this, uh, this myth they are applying 5000 mm of water it means 10 times more water to grow uh, in other words uh, to produce 1 kg of rice they are per, they are spending 5 tons of uh, 5 cubic meter 5 tons of water so we have been able to break this myth that rice does not need standing water it needs water like any other crops for 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 like for example like uh, cotton sugar and all those uh, and this water you can you can uh, provide to the rice uh, through any means for example on bed on growing on, uh, on ridges through spring uh, sprinkler and even through drip irrigation system you can provide but the the important point is that we have to meet the crop water requirement that is mentioned at about 500 mm so this was one of the most important and now it has been uh, uh, taken up by the development agency extension workers another most important thing we we basically experimented and it, now it is basically being upscaled it's the control of the urban flooding you know you basically uh, you might uh, heard uh, time and again here time and again that there in pakistan there is the urban flood the main of uh, the reason for the urban flooding is that over the time we have uh, uh, you know convert the city into uh, you know uh, concrete metallic uh, metal roads so immediately within no time the, the water that falls into the ground is converted into the into flash flood and ultimately resulting into the urban flooding so we have we and we have introduced the artificial ground water discharge at uh, techniques in in the country and now that has been taken up by the development agencies one of the judicial commission they have basically ordered the uh, in punjab uh, uh, to all the uh, water supply schemes and uh, and administration municipal administration uh, to install these recharge uh, well uh, they basically not only capture the rain water and also help to recharge the aquifer and at the same time they also help control the urban flooding uh, which has become a common phenomena uh, in particular in our part of the world and you see you can see uh, you know a similar kind of incident is being uh, you know uh, occurring in in middle east and some of the countries as well and one of our strength is uh, you know the, the uh, use of the tile drainage uh, techniques and machinery for the controlling the water logging and salinity you know lower industry part is particularly affected by water logging salinity and we are uh, basically organization do that are working on 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 tile drainage system to control the water logging and salinity uh like the as i mentioned that rain water you know uh, dry land areas are very important this driven said dry land area it is basically the area uh, where, which is basically dependent on the rain water so uh, if, we, if we capture the rain water if we use it root and red water for, for for livestock and other purposes that can give life to those desert and those areas and fortunately uh, our organization uh, we have been able to uh, you know develop more than a uh, 100 uh, reservoir each with uh, 440 million gallon capacity uh, uh, and we basically and this replicated in the entire 
Cholestan Desert and some part of the Dia Khan and Balochistan and also Thar, De Thar, uh, Thar Desert. After that, our work, the Cholestan Development Authority, they also developed similar number of uh, ponds. Now, if you travel in the, in the Cholestan Desert, Desert, after every 10 to 15 kilometers, we can find it ponds where basically you can see, uh, you know, uh, thousands of uh, herds, uh, they are coming there, they are uh, taking water uh, for, for li livestock and also they take human water, take water for themselves. Uh, and then they, they keep on moving to the, uh, when water from one pond finish, they will keep on moving to the next and, uh, and, and so on. At the same time, we are also, uh, you know, working on artificial groundwater recharge uh, in Balochistan, uh, particularly in the context of the revival of the Kare system. This is very, Kare is a very unique system. Uh, it is basically called Kanat in, in, in Iran and uh, uh, the other, so there are some other names for, for Morocco and the other area. So this is the techniques which provides, you know, water to the community round the clock, round the years, without any energy free of cost. So this is, a, a, I used to call it a pure man technology. And this is basically the masterpiece of engineering and cultural integrity, which our ancestors basically, uh, you know, centuries before they, they, they built this system. That this system was basically at the verge of, uh, you know, deterioration. And so we took, took up this challenge and now we have, uh, we are in the process to, uh, to uh, get these, uh, you know, carriages rehabilitated, and we are also uh, in a process to uh, get these, uh, you know, carriages uh, as a uh, as declared to uh, to be declared as a world cultural heritage. In fact, uh, this has been declared in the tentative list of the world cultural heritage of UNESCO. So we are working on it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a huge potential of uh, saline agriculture in 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 uh, Pakistan about. Um, uh, more than 10 million acre feet of drainage effluent is available that can be used for the rain man, land developments, for saline agriculture development and saline aquaculture. And we are, in fact, we are uh, using, you can see on the bottom left side there, we are using this saline water with the pitcher irrigation system to grow some of the vegetable in the third desert. So these are, you know, simple and smart uh, technologies. Other our you know marvelous work which have, we have been doing with the uh, within the country is the monitoring of the drinking water quality, uh, monitoring of the surface water quality, uh, use of the. Uh, in fact, we have uh, we are partner with the United Nations University, and we uh, who have received developed a policy score system to monitor and track the. Uh, uh, track the progress on the sustainable development goal six and its. Uh, in indicators. Uh, in fact, now we are a, a, we are a hub country uh, declared by the United Nations University where we are assisting the regional countries and to uh, and that that is one of the area where we can uh, you know assist our uh, sister countries from the OIC country uh, to to track and monitor their progress on sustainable development goals. Uh, similarly, we are also working on the, the seawater in Trojan. Uh, we are, in, uh, you know, and also uh, some of the emerging contaminants, uh, for example, persistent organic pollutants, pollutants, both in surface and groundwater, and in the transboundary water we are working on. Uh, there is a number of work we have done, uh, particularly now our focus is because uh, uh, this is the era of the knowledge and wisdom where we are focusing on. Uh, on basically technologies and using uh, internet of things for the water resources development and management. As I mentioned earlier, we, we have introduced the telemetry into a system which basically uh, measure the real time measure the discharge in the, uh, in the rivers and canals and it, it basically, you know, uh, try, uh, convey uh, the data to the screen installed at our office and also uh, in the office of the other stakeholders. Then we are also using the you know, soil moisture uh, sensor, canyon sensor, which these are again, uh, you can connect it with the net and you can get real time data, soil moisture sensor. And one of the, the most important thing which we, we 
also feel proud. This is the work we have done with the help of the University of Washington. Before 2016, uh, the NASA data was not available for for the uh, you know uh, human uh, you know use and and, and purpose, particularly the welfare the welfare purpose. After uh, 2016, they allowed data to be used for this purpose. So, with the help of the University of Washington, now we are uh, you know uh, getting this uh, satellite data, downscaling it. Uh, then, uh, you know, multiplying it using our own crop caption determined from the lysimeters. Uh, and uh, we are, you know, sending services uh, to 20,000 farmers each week. And, and this service tells the farmer whether their crop needs to be irrigated or not. And this message also, uh, you know, let the farmers whether there will be. Uh, you know, rainfall during the next week or not? What would be the wind velocity? Because wind velocity has a very important uh, impact for, for, for the irrigation. And similarly, uh, the temperature and the other data we are also, uh, you know, uh, conveying to them uh, so that they can decide about the sowing and, uh, you know, uh, providing irrigation to their crops uh, and, and their fields. So this is one of the the important which we are now in a process of upscaling uh, and we hope shortly we are in uh, we will be able to take it into more than half a million uh, farmers our outreach will be quite high similarly we are also uh, monitoring the groundwater real time so it also uh, it's very important to know uh, how groundwater fluctuate over time and space in both in terms of quantity and quality because this information is required to take any decision. Because over the time, the, the, uh, the, the bright spot uh, can become the hot spot and hot spot can become bright spot. So the real time monitoring of groundwater is very important uh, to, to, to uh, provide you know, advisory on the groundwater services. And on the similar analogy of the irrigation scheduling advisory, we are now in a process to uh, to uh, uh, to develop, you know, groundwater advisory services uh, for for the industry space, and we are we are starting uh, on a pilot basis. So these are some of the the knowledge product which we, we recently produced with the uh, with with our you know uh, partner. You will see, uh, you know, we have number of partners. We are not in fact. Of working in isolation, Grasco is our very strong partner. Uh, you know, uh, similarly, JICA is our uh, partner. ACAR is our partner. Uh, we are working with ICARDA International Center for Agriculture Research in Dry Areas, International Water Management Institute, Institute WHO, UNICEF, uh, CSIRO. We are working with them, and these are some uh, only some of the the knowledge product which we have displayed. Here, otherwise, uh, you can you know go to our website. Which will the address will be given on the last slide, and you can uh, uh, you know uh, have a look on the uh, number of publication and download. It. All these are freely available. You can download it of any uh, any uh, you know uh, publication that is of your interest. Uh, particularly now, I think uh, as I mentioned that. Uh, Two or three may be very important for you. Uh, the integrated water source development uh, guideline, which we prepared with the uh, uh, help of the UNESCO Pakistan, and uh, you know this policy support system, which uh, now the AC board is available on the UNU uh, United Nations University website. You can also glance through it. Uh, this this will give you uh, some of the idea how to monitor and track the progress on sustainable development goal. Otherwise, like the Millennium Development Goals, uh, developing countries like Pakistan and they are, and or the other OCI countries, they will be uh, in, in a basically a difficult situation uh, to, to, to progress, to report basically, to, to monitor and progress report to the United Nations. Even then we would have been, uh, done a lot of work, but if we don't properly monitor it and we don't, we are not able to report it to the United Nations, uh, United Nations, and its institution, then our all work will be basically, uh, it will not be properly 
uh, highlighted uh, at the international forum. So this is one of the most important document that we would like to see. So uh, what we can offer uh, to our sister organization, OIC countries, uh, if you look at this, we are managing one of the largest irrigation system in the world. In fact, we are uh, in, in, in many of the crops, uh, we are in the top 10 countries and we are managing one or the other way, uh, you know, our food security of the over 20 million people. So we are managing. Uh, and these are basically uh, one of the, the, the largest strength of uh, not only the, uh, PC, uh, our country, it's our institution, it's our nation. And this is one of the largest, one of the largest strength, one of the largest strength we have uh, 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 managing the system. Uh, in this context, we can help our, basically our, uh, you know, uh, our sister organization and, uh, and countries, OSC countries, on particularly on the use of the IoT uh, for water resources management, rainwater harvesting and recharge, uh, monitoring of the sustainable development goal using the uh, policy support system that has been developed by the United Nations University. And we are partnered, uh, uh, partnered with them very big, right from the beginning. Uh, then irrigation scheduling, when to apply in, how much to apply water. Water quality monitoring and management is very important, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning. And then groundwater uh, investigation and, many, uh, and monitoring management. is. Uh, these are some of the areas where we can offer our uh, services uh, to our sister organization, to our brothers living in uh, you know, OIC countries. So uh, with these uh, remarks, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think now the floor is back to uh, Hazima. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to have any uh, question, I have a good Thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation and a very informative one, I would say. And you can see that there are numerous comments regarding your excellent presentation and talk today. So we have some questions with your permission. Uh, should I read them for you? Sure, sure. So we have one question from Mr. Shahid Ahmed. He's saying that in Punjab and Sindh province, there are more than 100 of can canals for saline water drain. Among them, few are functional, while more than 90, uh, more than 90 percent of these canals are not functional. The situation in Sindh province in the districts like Shikarpur, Larkana, Dadu uh, are severely uh, waterlogged. Could PCRWR uh, bring them upgrade for future what, uh, soil acclimatization in these areas? Uh, thank you very much, Shah sir. This is a very important question. In fact, our, nowadays we are uh, you know, focusing our uh, work on, on the lower index, particularly we have, you know, Recently, government of Pakistan has approved a project worth rupees 480 million, where we are going to, you know, reclaim the the, the waterlogged land through our tech, technology, tile drainage system, which I already mentioned. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, this uh, uh, waterlogging and salinity cannot be uh, eradicated permanent. This is, this is basically a dynamic process, it's not a static process. Once you remove them, it will be uh, again there. So now the, we are basically uh, moving towards the uh, concept of living with salinity and uh, uh, using this, uh, you know, drainage effluent instead of, uh, you know, removing the, uh, the drainage effluent from the system, which is basically again, uh, cost intensive and it, or it has a lot of environmental complications. Uh, it is, uh, you know, the, now the world is moving towards how do you, uh, you, do, uh, you can better use the drainage water and how you can live with the salinity. If you look at the, you know, this one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, present uh, one of the, you know, report on uh, extreme left hand sides are doctor to salinity in the southern interspace. So this is basically a provide a comprehensive view and the way forward how to live with the salinity because you cannot eradicate salinity forever. So you have to live with it, with, with the salt tolerant crops, with the, uh, uh, with the with, with some other, you know, your practices. 
to keep basically the idea is to keep the uh, the, the cylindry below the root zone. So we are working on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, so here is another question from Dr. Shahid himself again. Um, in the recent decades, many national and international oil exploration companies had completed their exploration operations to investigate oil and gas in Punjab and Sindh. Major groundwater streams are, are disturbed and contaminated with salt and heavy water. This water is not suitable for daily use and consumption. Um, major uh, soil waterborne diseases are being spread by this groundwater. Uh, could you propose some alternatives to mitigate these challenges in the rural and the urban community of Pakistan uh, due to this contaminated groundwater? Uh, basically, here we have to use the concept of the you know zero liquid discharge. Uh, this, which basically we are now this, uh, recently we have developed a water conservation strategy for our ministry, and for particularly the point you are mentioning is. Uh, that, that is basically the concept of the zero liquid waste. Any industry like the oil exploration, oil exploration you know, uh, companies, they should uh, uh, reuse that water instead of uh, you know, throwing it to, uh, to, the, uh, to the, you know, the, the main streams or the other areas and then uh, you know, uh, polluting and deteriorating the entire ecosystem. So they, they, we are basically proposing this policy, uh, you know, guidelines for our you know, national and provincial government uh, to adopt this policy uh, of the zero liquid uh, discharge. Uh, so, so they are bound to, uh, to use and reuse, reduce, use and reuse uh, the any amount of water they are, they are producing, whether it's a wastewater or it is a, you know, a, Thank you very much, sir. So we have another question, which is quite relevant to the situation in Pakistan nowadays. So major cities also have rainwater. How can they store and manage it? Yeah, this is very simple. Uh, I wish my, my colleague, they have put one of the, uh, I will ask them if they can quickly do it. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, introduced the techniques of the rainwater harvesting both on the surface and on the uh, on the groundwater. Okay, the water that is coming to your system, particularly in the in the uh, urban area, the water from your rooftops, water from your driveways, water from your your lawn, water from your grounds, and even on, on from the from the roads. This water can be stored either on the surface to make some small lakes. And you just imagine if you make small lakes in the, in the cities and, and in, 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 your, in the, the housing society or the area where you are eating, what kind of aesthetic value it will add to that area? It's, uh, it will help uh, to improve the aesthetic value. It will help to improve the microclimate change. It will help to recharge the groundwater. It will help to to uh, reduce the urban flooding as well, as well, number one. Number two, we have also introduced the technology which I mentioned, that the groundwater recharge technology. There is tremendous... I can uh, do that. Uh, as well. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, there is tremendous... Apologies, you know, kindly continue. Let me to finish my, uh, you know, there is a tremendous... Potential, for example, CDA, Capital Development Authority, they are installing 100 recharge well uh, with their own resources. And so far they have uh, uh, completed 50. And during the last uh, few rain, uh, more than 60, uh, more than 6 million gallon of water has been recharged because we have installed the, the, the uh, measuring flow meters there as well. More than 6 million gallons of water has been recharged into the aquifer. Number one, when just uh, you look at, uh, I will give you some simple estimate. If uh, for dinghy purpose, we assume one gallon of you know, water for per day for one person, it means you have saved the water, secured the water for 6 million people with a few, 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 rain, few rainfalls. Uh, besides having the other benefits, as I mentioned that, uh, it's going to tolerate the urban flooding and, and the associated issues. 
so so these are simple and smart techniques uh, and I, I, if i i could not basically understand your question if you are talking about the uh, its, its cost its cost basically vary over uh, you know uh, it depends on the the area where you are basically uh, going to recharge going to harvest water um, the rainwater potential the groundwater hydrology lithology all these parameters basically groundwater recharge is quite a complex phenomena uh, number one the whole the technology of groundwater pumping in reverse order has to be used number two the whole the, the technology of the rainwater harvesting has to be used so both are have to have to be club uh, for for uh, appropriately groundwater recharging purposes thank you sir so as we are um as we are near the end of the event so i'll just take last two questions uh, number one is from Dr. Uh, Hafiz Rahman. He's asking how can crop zoning help to reduce water footprint? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is a very important question. Uh, for example, uh, if we, Dr. Hafiz, remember uh, when we were, uh, you know, young, uh, there was a crop zoning, and sugarcane was uh, grown in particular area, and uh, that was basically uh, they were they were allowed to take those, you know, cane on to a particularly sugar mills. Uh, okay, uh, basically because these are the high, uh, you know, water requirement crops, uh, they, 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 are, they need to be basically restricted to only those area, number one, where uh, rainfall it is sufficient, surface water uh, is, uh, is sufficient, or the groundwater is relatively fresh and, and shallow like uh, the area we, we have, have uh, uh, Sialkot, Narowal, Sahiwa. Uh, because these are the, as you mentioned that from one kilogram of rice, one kilogram of rice, it needs five tons of water. Okay, if you go to the, uh, uh, go to the uh, southern uh, Punjab, any other area, which is basically where you are relying on the, the groundwater, which is groundwater is deep and saline, uh, so uh, definitely, uh, it will has a tremendous impact on the on the water footprints. So you have to uh, uh, to to basically restrict these these both crop, particularly rice and, and sugar cane, to certain area. And secondly, you, we should only produce these uh, you know you, these crops for our domestic uh, uh, needs because their export uh, is, is export basically. Is all a loss, loss again. Instead, we should focus on uh, on, uh, on on producing the oil seed crops, where the oil seed crops, uh, their their basically water requirement is almost ten times less than the the sugar cane and the and the rice. I give you one example. We are exporting rice to the tune of uh, about US two uh, US, uh, about uh, uh, US dollar two billion. And almost the same amount of, uh, you know, US dollar, 2 billion, we are importing the pulse, uh, sorry, oil seed. Okay, oil seed, uh, oil seed. So if you just, uh, you know, uh, reduce uh, investing on the, uh, on the uh, uh, on rice and focus on the oil seed crops, uh, you will be, uh, you will not be in a loss uh, in in term of your foreign exchange, but your water will be, uh, you know, uh, save more than 10, 10 times, which we are, we are basically exporting, uh, virtually exporting this fresh water to the to other countries. I hope I answered the question. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so there, here's another question from Mr. Shahzad Ahmed. He's asking kindly throw some light on adoptability of lysimetric based irrigation scheduling by farmers. Number one, and secondly, can we expect that Pakistan's irrigation system will shift from supply based to demand based? Uh, let me to answer your second question first. It will take uh, basically it will take some time uh, because uh, our system basically was divided all was on the on, on the designed on the supply based. Uh, we have the Warabandi system, which we have, uh, you know provide water weekly to the farmer according to his land and, and, and crops. So it will take time, but, but the government is now taking some serious uh, steps for it. Uh, coming to the, your first question, 
how the crop water requirement and this knowledge can be useful for the farmers and how they can apply. Uh, I think uh, you know that initially uh, adoption of crop water requirement and irrigation scheduling is quite difficult and complex. And in fact, it is outside, uh, out of the reach of the common farmers because it is either based on the soil moisture knowledge, which you will get through the soil moisture equipment like tensiometers uh, or other gypsum blocks or some others, uh, or you will have to get data from the climate change and you will have to use some numer numerical models. Okay. Uh, uh, and the, both are basically difficult. So what we are now, uh, as I mentioned, we are using this, uh, we are basically downloading the, uh, the data from the, uh, from the satellite data and downscaling it uh, to the district and to the canal command level. Then using the crop question, which you determine through the lysimeter uh, studies, uh, uh, through that, we basically generate a message for the farmers in Urdu language. Uh, how much water his particular crop, for example, in Sugurda weed, how much water he has consumed uh, during the, the last week, and what will be the status of rainfall during the coming week, and what would be the uh, wind speed uh, during the coming week. So he can, uh, for example, uh, uh, if he has, uh, in, in a common language, if the, he has applied, uh, normally our farmers, if you talk to the farmers, they will tell you that uh, they are basically, in each irrigation, they apply on an average three inch or inches of water. So our message is also in inches. So if he, he applied three inches of water to his particular crop, and if we send them message that last week your crop has taken uh, 0.5 inches of water, it means he clearly understand, and we have interviewed the farmer, uh, that still 2.5 inches of water is in, available with his uh, soil, so that he can prolong. So he keep on adding the, the, the last big uh, information to his gadget, and then ultimately when he sees that the, all the moisture has, is close to uh, disappear, uh, 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 he apply water. By doing though, so, uh, we have uh, basically we are following the farmers as well. The farmers reported that they, they in certain cases they are able to, for example, particular case of wheat, they have been able to skip two irrigations. If, for example, out of three or four irrigation total irrigation of wheat, if the farmer is able to skip uh, even one irrigation because of this uh, simple and smart uh, technology, uh, he is basically uh, he, he is doing a great job. And this is basically the success of this. Uh, uh, technology and secondly, you can very simply upscale it to uh, to to the to, to 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 the larger area because you don't need to uh, work on the, the the modeling tool. You don't need the data, climate data, numerical model. You don't need soil moisture, you know, equipment uh, because uh, they have their own limitation and you cannot use those soil moisture equipments for the for the uh, for the larger area. I hope I answer your question. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, as we're running out of time, so I'll just take a last question, which I think is as important one. Um, so it is from Mr. Amar Matlob. He's asking, what is your opinion or, about water pricing and how it can help uh, uh, achieve judicious water use in Indus Basin? Uh, I, I think this is one of the most important, one of the most burning questions. And, uh, and uh, this is one of the most area basically neglected uh, in, in the area. Our national water policy very clearly really, you know, uh, demonstrated that uh, water pricing in, in, in all sectors, agriculture, industrial, and domestic sector uh, will, be, um, uh, uh, will be brought to the reasonable levels, so, number one. Number two, uh, they have also talk about the 100% measuring in the, for the domestic and industrial sector. So they, they, these are basically ambitious targets that has been given in the national water policy because our you know, economy or our system is basically a politically driven system and, and there are some you know, challenges in the, in the use of uh, uh, you know, uh, increasing the prices. But gradually, uh, government of Pakistan is basically and 
provinces now, now, now they are some taking some, uh, you know, uh, steps towards increasing the, uh, the Abhyana and, and the pricing for the pedestrian use. One of the things I think you will see also important uh, that the, the, this season, government of Sindh, uh, they ban rice cultivation on certain, uh, almost seven of their canal commands for this, uh, you know, for each season. So now there is a much better awareness uh, for the policy makers and the practitioners. And there is basically knowledge base available uh, for them to, to, to make some informed decisions. Uh, so, so I hope that uh, with time, uh, this water pricing the issue will be taken up. And this is very important. Uh, otherwise, there is no incentive for the stakeholder to save water. Right. Uh, so thank you very much. With this, we come to end of our uh, talk today. And there are so many questions uh, still in the chat box, but I would request um, these participants to please uh, send an email to Professor Ashraf. Uh, probably his team uh, will get back to you with the answers, inshallah. And so thank you very much for your time and uh, for, you know, for this excellent presentation, I would say. And uh, also I would like, on behalf of Comstech, I would like to thank our participants who remained with us and we had a very interactive session. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you in uh, some other event of Comstech. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.